Well, start as you mean to go on for Manchester United. Finish where you left off, or carry on where you left off, rather. 3-0 at home to Liverpool. Arna Slot's first real big test to see where he's at tactically in terms of where he is with the, the group of players he has. It's still Jurgen Klopp's team. And outclassed doesn't do it justice. I mean, there was one winner and one winner only in this game. Poor from Manchester United. Still same old, same old issues galore from Ten Hag's team. And as much as the shot count didn't read as bad as it has done in the last year or so, they were still very, very open and very just poor structurally. Don't get me wrong. Individually, there were some shocking performances. And we're going to talk about Casemiro. But, you know, the fullbacks bombing forward. Arncelot has been in this league a matter of a couple of weeks. And he's already got this team so well scouted. And set traps all over the pitch that, that, that he capitalised on. Exploited it. And got the goals. 3-0 could have been more. Once the third went in, they sort of stepped off the gas a little bit. And just, just played a natural game. But we're going to go over it tactically. Going to go over the United attacking phase first. But United would look to build up in their original sort of two four four that would that would rotate and it would be fluid and flexible. As we know how they like to manipulate positions and move players around. Sometimes you'll see Dallow and Verton, you'll see Mane or Casemiro moving up into the forward line. But they didn't actually get a chance to do that. A lot of anything, it was kept pretty rigid to their two four because of Liverpool's pressing shape. They weren't really given time to have sustained uh, moments in build up where they could hold on to the ball. And Liverpool was a bit of a mid-block. They went with the 2-4. Gravenberg and McAllister staying a bit deeper, and they pressed with the front four. And it was always little traps that they set. So if they tried to go to Martinez, then you'd have Salah curling around from Dallow to then mark into Martinez, press him on the ball. Sabozlai pushing up onto Maynou, Jota onto Casemiro, and Diaz coming round into De Ligt. This would cause Martinez to go back to Anana. And this is where the the work of the midfield too. And I will say, Gravenberg, I had my doubts about him in the holding midfield position. And while I still do, him and, and McAllister, to be fair, did an excellent job of, of of patrolling that midfield zone. So let's just say Salah would follow the run round to Martinez. This would leave Dallow free. Gravenberg would move over if the if the angle of the pass from Onana was shaping up as if he was about to pass to Dallow. McAllister would sort of cover across a little bit, keeping within a few yards of Fernandez though, and it meant that if Gravenberg come round, he could press this area and prevent that from opening up. And then as a result, if it went the other way, if, if he turned around to then get Diaz dropping in, and you'd have Jota doing the similar role on this hand side of shadowing Casemiro while going into De Ligt, which meant that McAllister could back the press up here, or you'd have McAllister still stuck on Bruno with Sabozlai shadowing the press in and Gravenberg coming up to Manu. And Dallow was seen as a harmless option because if the Liverpool press did their job right, and let's say if then Jota went from De Ligt to Onana, then Dallow couldn't be found. And if he was found with a pass, then the team could react and they could scuttle over as they were one to do, suppose like coming across, Salah dropping in and, and pressing from behind, and they could win the ball back easy. And this is one thing this Liverpool team did really well. When we talk about sort of pressing triggers and, and setting traps, if that press didn't work and, and United were able to find the ball in behind their, their initial front four press, then you'd see fantastic backwards pressing from the likes of Sabozlai, from the likes of Gravenberg, on Mainu and Casemiro, as that back four would keep an eye on the, this front three for United, front four if you include Bruno, and just hold him off long enough for the recovery runs of Salah, of Gravenberg, of Sabozlai, of Jota, of Diaz, to get them from behind and win the ball. And United was so slow in build-up, especially from this guy, Casemiro. You cut off his passing lanes and you buy yourself just enough time to recover in. Gravenberg did it a few times and win the ball and then launch your attack. And the reason Casemiro would hold off when trying to play forward was because he was trying to wait for the team to transition into their more sustained attacking phase. Sometimes you'd get Xerxes dropping into this area to try and receive the ball from deep from Martinez or whoever. Canate and Van Dijk did an excellent job of engaging him in these areas just to prevent him from getting on the ball, moving into positions in the opposition's half, but winning the duel every time. Xerxes, this was a test. This was a test and he failed. He's going to have to adapt to English football a lot quicker. Rashford and Garnacho couldn't get involved in the game because they were so out wide. Also, when the chances would break to United and they would get the ball in between the lines and Liverpool's midfield couldn't cover, their movement was very poor. They were kept outside the width of the Liverpool back four, 
Poor runs, not really making an angle for Xerxes or Bruno Fernandes. And as a result, they'd have to drop in a little bit deeper to receive the easy pass. And it would break down United's attack. So Liverpool kept their, their structure very sound all throughout. And as I was just saying with Casemiro, the transition was what killed United. So when they would try and transition into their main attack in phase, which if I just sort that out now, it would be this, it would be the 3-1-6 with the fullbacks pushed high and wide into the inverted areas, or maybe sometimes you get Dallow on the outside with Rashford pushing in. And this was so well scouted by Arnslot and even said in his interview that when they push the fullbacks higher up, that's their time to press. And the positioning of Diaz and Salah was kept deliberate. They'd be kept high and wide in these scenarios to exploit that space in where Casemiro lost the ball with poor passing and dwelling on the ball time and time again. It gave them the incentive to play these balls into Salah, who attacked the right-hand side countless times, did it for the first and third goal. Poor from United. They are so not set up well in their rest defence. The way they push the fullbacks on and leave that back three isolated that isn't the most mobile back three, mainly wasn't the most mobile midfielder. They can't run. And Liverpool exploited it, set their traps, set their triggers, and United fell from every single time. And as a result, Liverpool win the game 3-0. How did Liverpool do in possession? I don't know whether to be too critical on Ten Hag for the United off the ball shape, because we've seen it before, and we've seen it work before in big games. But God, was it painful to watch throughout this game. And for so many reasons. One, it was the 4-2-4, as you can see here. Liverpool in their back three with Robertson, Van Dijk and Canate coming across. Alexander Arnold giving his free role as right back and sort of moving where, kind of wherever he wanted to. We covered it in the last video. Grabbing Burke McAllister as the two sitters. So Bosley in between the lines as the sole ten. Jota as the striker. Salah and Diaz very high and wide, pinning the fullbacks back. Now, usually you get Rashford and Garnacho coming across to the wide centre-backs in this position as Fernandez and Xerxes can pissed and pressed the central player on the ball covering their marker and so on and so forth causing them to rotate force the ball back and then that's United's trigger to go and press but the position of Trent Alexander-Arnold forced Rashford back into this area countless times and as a result with this three at the back situation for Liverpool it meant Xerxes was in between positions he was sort of tasked with going to press Canate while shadowing Gravenberg But Bruno Fernandes still had the duty of shadowing McAllister while going to press Van Dijk. And so it left them 2-1-4 on in these situations, United, and they were constantly beaten. Rashford getting pulled into this position, and sometimes Trent would move there without the intention of even getting on the ball. Robertson was a fairly stationary figure. To be fair, he never got on the ball that much. Garnacho did his job well enough. But the work of Xerxes and Bruno in this situation in coming to press Canati and Van Dijk and shadowing McAllister and Gravenberg was... A thankless task anyway, because it was always going to be hard in a two-on-four situation, but I also thought they were dreadful, because they were constantly caught in between nowhere, not getting close enough, but not following McAllister either, so Van Dijk and, and Canate were able to pick pass, and it wouldn't just be this pass into here, which you could kind of understand. It would be these little passes round the side as McAllister would make subtle movements to get on the ball here and play it forward. And you would see the backing up of Casemiro Mena, who would jump onto Gravenberg and McAllister to, to support him. But still, the press from Xerxes and Bruno wasn't intense. And the punishment that came from this is the space that developed in between the midfield and defence was huge. And there'd be a couple of ways they'd really exploit this Liverpool. One would be if Rashford just got caught sleeping as he's one to do and they could play the ball. They could play the ball into Trent Alexander Arnold, who could use his fantastic passing range to to get the ball forward and, and really hurt that United back line. Another one would be on this side, so Bosley could sometimes come into this position, or sort of a la Kevin De Bruyne, and receive the ball outside of United's shape and progress it. De Litt and Martinez were forced into positions where they couldn't really engage to press because you'd get a lot of Diaz making movements inside that would drag Masroi in. Salah would sometimes come in central as well, dragging Diogo Dallo in. And so it meant that that back two was sort of pinned. They, would, they were occupied by Jota and it gave movement for Sabozlai to maybe move down the line that De Litt would then have to cover across as Martinez covered across. And that space just consistently provided too much trouble for Manchester United. They couldn't deal with it. And and Liverpool were breaking out of the press countless times. And again, it's more space in the wide area that they could create and get crosses away, play between the lines. And it wouldn't just be the passing through the Manchester United pressing shape. 
They could also get Trent Alexander Arnold in the ball in deep position. If Rashford wasn't doing his job well enough, he could fire his passes into the forward areas, into Salah. Uh, you know, he was allowed to invert at times. And so they could get the ball from back to front easy. United causing their own troubles again, leaving so much space in that midfield and not having the personnel to deal with what Ten Hag is asking from. And as a result, United win 3 0, demolition. And it just feels like it's going to be another long year for United. But full credit to Arn Slot. A lot of people, including me, preying on his downfall a bit at the start of the season, but he's answered every test with flying colours so far. Tactically, very high level, and by the looks of it, Liverpool have done very well. Uh, how annoying it is to purchase a good Dutch manager. There we go. Cheers for watching, lads. I'd love to hear your feedback in a bit.